Hey there Glam Fam, it's me Linwood here and today I'm sharing with you guys my top 10 tips on how to deal with curly hair for people with curly hair. Now if you've already followed us on Instagram at GetGlamFam then you've probably seen these tips in a recent post that I wrote out on there. But if for some reason you don't follow us there, you're not on Instagram or you just simply hadn't read these tips because you were just liking photos and scrolling, that's what this video is for. Let's dive right in. My first tip is that moisture is everything. So invest in quality moisturizing products. Now I know some of y'all are probably over here like, What am I supposed to know about some moisturizing products? Why don't you just share them with me? I'll put them in the description box down below just for you, boo. I haven't forgot about you. Just check down there. I'll also try to pin it in the top comment. Now that being said, your protein balance is not to be ignored either. It's very important, but you'll find that you don't need it quite as much as you need moisture if you have curls. To understand more about how moisture balance and protein balance work together, I'll have a little eye slide out right here in the corner, uh, or you can also check in the description box down below where I discuss protein and moisture balance so you can better understand your hair and how it should feel and react to your products. My second tip is to grow to accept, understand, learn to love your hair even with frizz. Frizz is normal and it's not a bad thing. Now that being said, if your whole head is looking like frizz, you have no definition whatsoever, then we've got some things we need to address. But some frizziness is fine, especially if it's like day three or four of your curls and you're not shampooing this hair every single day, which I honestly don't typically recommend. If you've got more of a bit of frizziness in there, a lot of times if you'll notice, that's when you get more compliments. But it seems like the days I spend the most effort and energy on my hair, everybody in their mama says nothing. Literally nothing. When I wake up and my hair is frizzy, it's busted, it looks dry, and like who the Hello Kitty has run a weed whacker, a rake, and a hoe through my hair. Those are the days that I get compliments. So just learn to love the frizz, learn to embrace it. It still looks good, okay? Now if you've got a section of frizz, like right here in the Jesus Help section, we gotta moisturize that. Refer back to tip number one. <laughs> tip number three, never go to bed on wet hair. Doing so is asking yourself to end up with matted hair. If your hair is curly and you're going to sleep on wet hair, there's a high likelihood of you waking up with your hair matted to your head or stuck together, clumped together in certain places. It's just not gonna work out well. So if you shampoo your hair at night, I would recommend putting it in twists, plaits, or in a high pony on top of the head, maybe in a bun, just to prevent those ends and that hair from rubbing against each other. Your hair will thank me later. It'll have so much less friction, and that way when you get up in the morning, all you gotta do is apply a little bit of product or mist to reactivate the product you already have in there, and you are good to go. Step four is to pineapple your hair at night so your curls are able to last a bit longer or your wash and goes, your twist outs, things like that are able to last a bit longer. Now, inevitably, whenever I say this, somebody always asks me what pineappling is, so I do have a hair tie here. You can also use one of the elastic headbands, but basically what you're gonna do is bring all of your hair up to the top of your head, like so. Just know, I just pull it all up, all of it. Snatch it all up, eh. like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead from there. I'm gonna put this band on here one time. I don't need to wrap it a million times. I really just need it to hold up in place. I can sleep like this, or if you have one of those headbands on, you can literally just push it up to the top of your head. Sleep like this. When you wake up in the morning, all you do is pull the band, shake, and you know position curls a little bit but from there you're pretty much good to go it's fine notice a little bit of frizz ain't nobody tripping see it frizz is fine and appling your hair is a great way to preserve a wash and go without feeling like you've got to manipulate that hair every single day it's also a great way to manipulate your uh, twist outs things like that so definitely give a pineapple a try and pineapples are also great for your health so if you're not allergic no, feel free to eat them too. Tip number five. Now this one, I, I really give more for people who want body, but I focus my product on the mid shaft and the ends of my hair. And I usually apply with prayer hands like this. What that does, it helps to keep from separating my curls and it allows me to focus product where I need it while allowing me to easily build body later. I also focus product around the hairline so that way even when I've done things to get this area bigger, it still gives me some definition around the front so my hair looks done okay so making sure you're applying product around the hairline and the mid shaft and ends just helps things to look very neat without you losing all of the volume that you could have like no volume up here right now is because I've got tons of product down at the base so I'll show you guys some techniques too on how to make that work a bit better tip number six is to gently separate the ends of your curls for, uh, I'd say, more fullness. So I just go through, 
and just find where it naturally wants to separate. Lightly begin to separate those curls out like so. And this way it just gives more of a full look. So if you're looking for more voluminous curls, you can go ahead and do this. And notice I'm not getting crazy, but look, the volume that you get on the ends here with just that few that I've separated can make a massive difference. Now you don't want to just rip through this. This is literally something that you can do in segments. And I've got it going pretty slow at the moment just to kind of show you guys. But I mean, this is a really easy tip. So yeah, and honestly what I'm feeling for is areas where I can feel like that curl is more structured, it's more clumped together. I can go in and just boop, separate it right on out, just like so. Notice it still keeps the defined ends on there. And I don't know if you guys can see the difference between just that little bit I did here and here. It helps to add quite a bit of volume to it. So haven't done this side and I'll show you guys what's up. So from there I'm gonna go in just behind my hairline with a pick, yes, an old school pick with the fist. And we're just gonna go ahead and pick at that root area. This is like for, again, when I was saying that you wanna apply your product to the mid shaft and ends. So look at the difference between here and here, just with separating out those few curls and utilizing a pick to give extra body at the base. Notice I didn't pull that pick all the way through my hair. It's also not in the back, so we still got some flatness back there. So I want you guys to be able to see the difference that can make, especially if you're taking it and applying it to areas like this here to give you even more build. Look at that versus this. Massive difference, you guys. So yeah, let me fix the rest of this real quick. You can also go in and scratch at just the root area. And this is a great way to help build body that honestly doesn't take a ton of time. You can also use your fingers to separate out those curls at the base and add more body there as well. So I don't want you guys to feel like you have to have a pick. It just makes the job easier. Get up there, get up there. Yas, volume. Let's move on to the next tip. So tip number seven is to go ahead and sleep on satin or silk, not on cotton. Your hair will thank me later. I've discussed this in a couple of different videos, but the main reason why is because satin is a moisture repellent fabric rather than a moisture absorbent fabric like cotton is or a thirsty fabric like cotton is. That means it's not absorbing moisture out of your hair as easily as cotton would, which means your hair stays more moisturized and more moisture is more definition, is more health, is less breakage because dry hair breaks. So again, this refers right on back to tip number one, which was moisture is everything. Now I want you guys to see here, like, because I know there's going to be somebody in the comments that's like, these tips don't work. Need I say more? Okay then. Tip number eight, if you find that you are always having ends that are frizzing or knotting or you have little balls on the ends of the hair, honey, your past due for a trim, it is time. I would never recommend going longer than three months between trims, and it could just be literally a light dusting of the end, but just keep in mind, if you've got that going on, you're snatching through those knots and balls on the hair, which means that you're gonna be causing breakage, and breakage leads to more split ends. It also means that your hair's not as healthy, your curls aren't as defined, and no matter what you're using, no matter how much moisture you get, then your hair is constantly frizzy, and that type of frizz is not a good frizz. Number nine, if you wear color, Make sure that you're very careful not to use tons of bleach or to go excessively light. It's going to do quite a bit of damage to that hair and can honestly cause your curls to loosen. So just make sure that you're going with things wisely or using a color additive like Olaplex to help out with strengthening your hair as you're going through that process. You can thank me for that one later. Anyone who's had that experience of having their hair over bleach and lost their curls, let me know in the comments down below. And last but not least, number 10, which is to go ahead and make sure that you are detangling your hair from the ends on up. This is not just for curly hair, this is for literally every head of hair, but you would be amazed at people I see that are trying to rip a brush or a comb from the top to the bottom. Like curly hair, look at this. Curly hair is not made for brushes and combs to be ripping through. I barely put a brush or a comb to my hair, period. But if for some reason you're brushing out your hair, let's say you're about to put it in braids, something like that, start from the ends and work your way up. You are so welcome because you're gonna need that tip. If you have further tips that you'd like to add, feel free to put them down in the comments below. And if you had one tip that you felt like just stood out amongst all the others and really made a difference for you, please let me know that down below as well. Until next time, you guys, take care, God bless, and stay glam, and you know I love you, boo. Bye. If you don't yet follow us on Instagram at GetGlamFam, be sure to check us out. We have tons of stuff that you just may love, including comedy, foolery, and behind-the-scenes stuff on videos like the one you saw today. 
Be sure to check us out and follow. Take care, God bless, and stay glam. You know I love you, boo.